Hey, what is up, everyone? Killian and Flo here bringing you the long-awaited 15th Everything Terra podcast. Sorry about the pretty much the delay, everyone. You know, this past three weeks or so has been pretty hectic as far as job, as far as my job, as far as me getting Trojans from all that Ellen porn and <laughs> Flo. Um, I don't know what was happening with Flo's, but basically we're back now hopefully we'll be able to do this every single week how we've always planned it to but yeah thank you for your patience and hopefully you'll enjoy this one for those of you who don't know my name is Kilrian. i am a used to be an active streamer i do youtube stuff and i also have quite a bit of terror related content on the new Terra Today forums. So if y'all haven't checked out Terra Today, it's kind of like our sponsor. You can see right above me right now. Actually, I got a Terra Today logo. Um, but basically what they have is easily the best source of terror related guides and content on the internet. As well as terror related news. Especially um, brought in by Yosha and brought in by Espe, who actually do translations and data mining and everything on the K-Terra content. So this really let it really lets you kind of get a look into the content that's going to be upcoming into into North America Terra, North American Terra as well as EU Terra. So that's going to be it for me. What about you? What's up? Flo? <laughs> My name is Flo and uh, I'm an active MMO streamer. Uh, I've been recently been getting into the whole the whole YouTube stuff and really trying to get those uh the information out there to the public um uh for the most part i do provide a lot of technical and um mechanical advice for terra in terms of um you know just getting better as a player individually and just showcasing a lot of the end game for terra so you can check out my stream at twitch tv slash four and my youtube as well uh for the most part today's podcast is going to be a little bit more of like an overview of what we've missed out seeing as how eu EU is going to get Reaper tomorrow, uh, oh, or the tomorrow. next few days, and so they they are finally going to get the patch that we've had for like the past. How long two we weeks. had Reaper for? Three three weeks, two. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So today we're going to be just doing like a brief overview of the Reaper patch. What else are we going to talk about? On top of that, I kind of want I kind of want to point out just with the with this patch, they've also kind of butchered the queuing system. Um, for those of you who don't know who are PvP oriented players, uh, basically all PvP content in Terra, save Kuma Asylum, has a, not a hidden rating, but it's a matchmaking rating. So the more you win, your higher matchmaking is going to be. This applies for Corsairs, this applies for Freywind, and this applies for, um, 3v3, obviously. And with this, with this recent patch, they tried to implement this, this idea of basically consolidating the ranges of rating people can get paired up against and what this has done is it's created i i could understand for a game like world of warcraft or something that has a huge player base where you you can have a huge disparity of of rain of ratings basically out there playing but now we don't get cues. What what has your been, experience been so far with this? Uh, for the most part, it's like for... Um, I can understand how the system works. The system is based upon a vast amount of players and popularity of the battlegrounds and such like that. If there's not enough people doing it, the cues are going to like really break. I um, It's mainly based on like they're trying to like balance it out. Like It's a good idea, but for um, battlegrounds being really endgame and in a sense really hardcore right now like it's just kind of like it's not only is it intimidating enough for to the point where there's not enough traffic in battlegrounds but to the point where if you are around 100 plus rating average difference like around 80 to 100 difference you pretty much don't pair up against each other like it doesn't like it doesn't matter how long you've waited uh we've we've had like around what uh, four to five teams waiting at the same time yeah. to the point where we, ha we have to like switch up characters, switch up characters, switch up characters to try to, like, play with each other. And, um... Uh, for the most part, for the EU players, I know, um... Uh, Arya, he's already addressed this idea to, um... the EU, the EU forums, the EU staff, 
So they're mm-hmm. gonna fix it on their end. They're gonna revert the changes, and we're on NA side. Oh, we're really? hoping this gets reverted by this Tuesday or the following week. So it pretty much sums it up. So, so you've actually talked with individuals regarding on the EU end that it's actually not gonna be applied. Uh, what it is is DTMAC basically was saying like, hey, this is the problem they're having in NA right now. We're gonna get the patch soon. Please, yeah. GameForge, look at this and don't implement it into our system because the bat- like the pacing like the pace and traffic that battlegrounds in EU is is basically around the same pace as ours right now maybe even slower too so it's yeah, like yeah it's it's slower from what it's I a understand. lot slower too so it's like they <laughs> if 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 they, if they don't implement the system they pretty much put the gravestone on both NA and EU right now it's yeah. not gonna it's the main highlight point of like Terra Endgame right now so they really shouldn't fuck with that if they can yeah i mean i mean yeah. pvp is really the only thing we, we've said this multiple times before uh pvp is really the content that that never grows old sorry i apologize my my pokemon dog is barking all the time but basically pvp is the content that doesn't grow old pve in my opinion gets old pretty quick you know and if if they're limiting us and not letting us queue like how we want to, like heck, widen the range of of ELO difference because that'll just make more queue pops. Like mm-hmm. heck, if they're limiting it, then it's just going to limit the amount of time that the the core players, in my opinion, the the high end players are going to they're going to lose interest. So so they need to definitely do something. And hopefully, hopefully, it's a it will be a well addressed and quickly addressed problem. Just because, like I said, it's going to kill time. It's gonna it's gonna kill basically us wanting to play the game whenever we can't get our three spots that that we're all about, you know. Yeah, and for future content too. Like like we know like for a fact that we're going to have the new changes for Corsair's career. Like we've mm-hmm. been like. Looking it up, looking it up. For those who've been like really keeping an eye on Kita, they know like people will, are aware that there's going to be new Corsair stuff, and they're going to try doing raid Corsairs. Yeah, and it's going to be the same thing because it's that's Elo based too, you know. So if if they they just need to change this as quickly as possible, and we'll be able to live our lives in peace and be able to yeah. queue without having to wait so long. So everybody who's watching the podcast right now, whether it be on. Um, flow stream right now or if you're watching this on my video you know later on the road um make sure that you actually go in the forums and if there's a post on this respond to it like get it out there you know because make sure that they know that in mass knows or gameforge knows it's going to be an issue and so you so we really want to put put a spotlight on that problem because we're going to try to prevent you know the game from dying you know, so so kind of moving on to more of what we were intending this entire the entirety of the podcast was that was kind of like a PSA pretty much, but we want to talk about the overview, just what this patch brought into the game uh, for the Terra players ho- or for the EU players. Sorry, hopefully this will give you a little bit of insight into what you want to prepare for and how you're going to go about just starting it off. And for the U.S. players, just kind of reinforcing what is available and maybe maybe teaching you a couple things that you didn't know. So, first, uh, we have to pretty much show Reaper. You know, Reaper was the highlight. Yes. <laughs> Not flow the Reaper. Um, basically, Reaper was the highlight of this patch. Reaper was the big, like, announcement, the new content, essentially, that... that was brought into Terra, as well as their their whole advertising campaign for it, which I've actually seen a couple of little, you know, snippets on, like, anime sites and stuff. But, right now, Reaper, once again, if you have a level 40 character, you can make a level 50 Reaper, and then you go through a very basic starting zone to get you up to 58, and then, once you have 58, you're gonna be kinda on your own to getting to 60. How how long did it take you to get from fifty to fifty eight? Uh fifty eight. If you know, if you're aware, of, if you kind of just ignore the quest log and just kind of just just basically four twenty plays it, just go in there, do the quest, bam, next quest, do it. it takes you about like an hour, or so maybe like an hour and a half if you're like 
wanting to like watch your skill animation at the same time while you kill the, like the stuff. Yeah. For the most part, they make the leveling easy for the Reaper. It's not yeah. like you have to do a lot of work. No, it's like the quest. They don't even they don't even offer you XP. They just give you the level, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so just for the most part, like they pretty much give you the ki- the set kit that you need. Once you have fifty eight, you you're gonna have to play it just like any other player. Mm-hmm. And by the time you hit 60, um, for those like right there out there that you know are thinking, how do I gear my Reaper once I hit 60? How do I do this? How do I do that? They've actually changed uh, Baldur's Temple mm-hmm. to where Baldur's Temple actually drops um, Oculus gear, as they would call it. Like the, um, they give you um, each of the bosses in Baldur's Temple solo, pretty much they give you the accessories and they give you the T14 gear. It's like a daily entry that you can do two two entries if you have. Um, um, the elite status. I, I know EU has their own like s- sort of form of elite status yeah. as well. So just kind of going over there. I'll give you a good look at where it is on the map over here in Bastion, in the bottom right corner, Bastion. Pretty pretty much. Uh, um, they've changed it. It's equivalent to plus nine steadfast gear. So for those who yeah. are fresh 60s, getting into the game, getting to 60, I recommend all the players to go over and do Baldur's Temple every day. You also get a little, a few little nice items on the side too, so you kind of just stack it up. For example, the tokens. So just um, think of it as like a, a really easy daily chore. Yeah, <laughs> in sense. yeah. yeah. Baldur's Temple solo is is super easy. You know, on my Zerker, which obviously is like fully geared, I complete it in four minutes or so. So I I literally just beeline through that place. On my Reaper, when I first hit 60 with it, I cleared it in roughly 8 to 9 minutes. You know, so if you're completely, completely new, uh, maybe, you know, 10 to 12 minutes pretty much spent in that. And honestly, the Oculus gear is crazy. It's like crazy good. You know, back when we were gearing up, it was like, oh, hey, I have to get this... I have to farm this gear, and then I have to get that plus nine, and then I have to get my next. Gear. And then I, as then I go to the next dungeon, and I have to get that to plus nine. You get to the next dungeon, mm-hmm. get that to plus nine. Oh, I'm a fresh sixty. Let me go collect like <laughs> forty eight tokens to make my steadfast weapon. Then I have to go out of my way to spend money to get it to plus nine. Now you do one dungeon, you get a box. Is it the weapon? Yeah. Sweet, yeah. like <laughs> exactly. It since it is that I do, I honestly do like the the introduction of smart boxes to where it, it automatically will like go accordingly according to like what you want. So I think that that smooths out discrepancies basically, or like fights and raids, you know, or gearing out your entire raid. I think that that's actually a good addition, but. Honestly, I think the gear's overpowered. I think the Oculus gear's ridiculous. Um, if you get full Oculus gear, as well as Temple, so Baldur's Temple uh, jewelry, which also drops out of there, you're literally at 163 item level. Yeah, you immediately can queue in for the new dungeons. Yeah, and new, new dungeons? Heck, you can yeah. go straight into Wonder Hall Mard mode. Like, which, is, which is actually supposed to be your next goal for gearing yeah. right after you get Oculus gear. The thing about the Oculus gear is that it's strong enough for you to be viable in Wonder Home yeah. hard mode, to be honest with you. Um, for those who are asking, like, I know there's going to be these questions when we talk about Reaper. How viable is Reaper in PvP? How viable is Reaper in PvE? Um, by the time you get plus 12 Wonder Home gear, you pretty much are almost on par with every DPS in this game. You think it's, so? Yes, for sure, hundred percent. Because they're 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 really strong. They're they're strong. They're, they're I I honestly like I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway because it's my own opinion. I think they're borderline broken. Like it's just they just offered so much for the like for such a like a low skill curve. Like it just they do so many things, and it, it's kind of like um, playing an archer. You get you already get rewarded so much with yeah. um, landing good shots and all that stuff, and then by the time you're mechanically strong you just offer so much more it's the same concept with this except they add it all to your space bar so it's like <laughs> you just gotta just ram your, your keyboard and just go hard um for pve damage they pretty much they are um with wonder home gear there's already videos they are capable of doing two-man queen so they're they're pretty much balanced with other classes um was was well, that with Wonderhome? That was yes, with that's gear? Wonderhome gear right there. Wow. Wonderhome twelve gear. Um, for the most part, um, to all the PVE heroes out there, 
um, they are on par with they're in between a slayer and a warrior for the most part and those are two classes that are really viable for PvE right now so it's it, they're definitely viable and they definitely do contribute to some extent for PvE yeah. They don't um, offer that endurance debuff like warriors do, so they're not like super. They're not basically. You're still going to be better off bringing a slayer, you know, like currently, currently. But once they're on an equal footing in terms of pure gear, I think I think reapers are definitely going to be up there. Like they're going to be a valid. They're basically going to be a valid choice. I I think they're they're on par with archer DPS right now because archers yeah. are lower than slayers. Yeah, you know, I I think that they're they're very close to an archer, maybe a little bit above even, just because they have so much attacks. Essentially, they're like a warrior with range, you know. And overall, I think the Reaper for PVE heroes, it's a very very valid class, and it's a very fun one to play. Honestly, if you like that spamminess of a warrior, then this is adds the range, you know, of an ar- almost the range of an archer. And a whole bunch of like dashes and everything like that, and counter. I mean, counter alone can. They're do so they're much. a huge adrenaline rush class. Mm-hmm. Like like you'll you'll really get caught up with what you're doing, and you just feel so engaged in the battle that uh, it ends up being like a, uh, I don't know, a joy ride. It's a good roller yeah. coaster when you're playing this class for sure. Yeah. What for one thing that we do need to address though is EU players. What should we recommend whenever they first come across a Reaper in both PvE and PvP? Uh, for the most part, uh, it's going to be kind of the same rejection as in Korean NA. If you see them in Pug Dungeons, don't expect them to do well. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to say right now. like Don't pretty kick much... them right away though. Please, no, yeah, give, give a chance. <laughs> yeah, but like for the most part... Um, if you see a Reaper and you and you know they don't have the right crystals on, mm-hmm. then that's like an automatic kick in my opinion because it's clear that they're just coming in here to try to leech off of their run. So, yeah. for the most part, in solo queue, I mean, you're gonna see like a large portion of these like regardless in PvP. Yeah. Like in Corsairs, they are by far one of the strongest they're, classes. They're pretty retarded. They're, there's, there's, and people have seen it. Like, I even I got soloed by a Reaper and Corsairs. It's just like <laughs> they're extremely ridiculous. Like for the most part, um, so they offer so much to the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, um, the other thing I can recommend to EU players is if you are not capable of doing Wonder Home for various reasons, maybe you don't have a raid, maybe, um, maybe you just can't get in those dungeons because people don't want to bring Reapers. There is the option of crafting. Uh, the blood honed gear, which uh, which we should actually be uh, talking about shortly, yeah. pretty much with the new crafting system, you are capable of uh, getting lucky and crafting master workable PvP uh, PVE gear. Yeah. It's like it's like um, just under Wonder Home, but viable enough to do all the content. Yeah. So there it's is that option. It's also easily master work. Yeah, it's it's all. Lately, the gear in general has been easily mastered mm-hmm. for the most part, especially the Blood Hone gear. I know some people told me when they got the new Reaper gear for Wonder Home, it was like, hey, I masterworked in two scrolls. And then there's another guy that was like, hey, I masterworked in 80 scrolls. But for the Blood Hone, it seemed to be pretty stable. Like, yeah. they, they were they made it, like, intentional to make it easy. Yeah, it's like Steadfast. It's Steadfast. Yeah. It, has, it has that increased masterwork chance, which I think is very, very valid. Um, so, so let's kind of move on through since we did touch up on reapers and how how easy it is to level them uh and oh and by the way just before we kind of hop on as far as leveling a reaper once you get 58 if you have a friend i'll post a link to a video for suryadis so that that's like super fast power leveling if you have 100 percent xp boost um and then let's see yeah pretty much i pretty much just kind of wanted to plug life that in there because who wants to level from 58 to 60 anyway? Come on now. You can also uh, find that out by checking out Kyrian's uh, leveling guides on his YouTube. <laughs> if they wanted to know that information as well, it's out there. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll post an annotation for it. Yeah. I, I don't know my girlfriend's trying to... Look at Tara. Look at Tara? Okay. Didn't you order pizza? Yes, I ordered pizza. It should be here soon. So, anyway, 
basically back to the podcast. Moving on, I wanted to talk a little bit, a little bit about that Blood Home gear, that gear that uh, Flo was talking about regarding this new crafting patch. And honestly, I've been enjoying the crafting more than anything. I, I've always been a huge fan of the crafting systems and whatnot. But this is a full-scale rehaul of the Terra's crafting system. Uh, I know we've definitely we've definitely gone over this in past podcasts, but we're going to do it again to beat it the hell into you. So, <laughs> <laughs> what this patch did was it completely rehauled the existing Terra crafting system. It introduced a new thing called production points, which limits... It basically... Every single time you craft, every single time you gather, you're going to be using these points. So that essentially creates a chokehold as well as a... It adds value to these points that are going to be coming in. So, basically... Just sign it for me. And so basically, with this introduction of the production points and whatnot that are going to be available... It adds value to time spent to being able to actually craft things. Seeing as how all all the professions, weaponsmithing, armorsmithing, alchemy, and the new introduction of etching. Uh, which I'll kind of overview that in a little bit as well. So, all of these intermingle by utilizing all these crafting oils, which are going to be... You're good. <laughs> um... The crafting oils, so like, for example, I'm a master and artisan weaponsmith. I can craft this weapon crafting oil, which is actually used in armor smithing. So this just adds another... It requires everyone to be able to... Work together. Called? Yeah, work together. <clears throat> everyone has to use other people's materials to be able to actually craft the stuff that they want to. What's which, great about the crafting system is that... Like back then, like a lot of people that, that do the crafting trade in mm -hmm. general, you know, like um, the initial intention was, you know, if you have a guild, you guys can work together and make your own stuff and maybe like, like, you know, like buddy, buddy up and all like, you know, hey, you know, I need the oils for my gear. You need the oils for like, I need to make, I, I can do armor crafting. You do weapon crafting. So mm -hmm. he does weapon crafting. He makes oils for my, for me to create armor. And I make the, the oils for them for, for us to make the patterns. The guy that makes the patterns, the etching, the etching trade, they make oils for alchemy. Uh, that that would be like the alchemy, new, the new scrolls and such. And for alchemy, you know, they make the oils for the weapons, for yes. the new, the new T15 weapons and such. So it really, it really gives back that traditional feeling of crafting, where you know you depend on one another and really make each other stuff. Yeah. And um, for those that complain about the system, it's like um, it's been said over and over. It's kind of based off personal greed you can do your own stuff you know yeah. um uh for the most part the production points are um they're server based which means that um regardless if you do the the trades on either like let's say i did weapon crafting on my main and i have an alt for armor crafting we would have to share the same pool of production points to create yeah. our stuff so it is recommended to make multiple alts and have those alts maybe specialized in certain trades. After all, you can only have one specialized trade per character. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to go into that a little bit more. Um, sorry, I kind of cut yeah, you off. That's fine. Uh, so basically, with yeah. these four new, hold on, uh, with these four basic crafting systems now, before everyone could get everything to four ten, alchemy capped out of three hundred. Now everyone can get them to five hundred. Which, so at that 500 mark, you then have to choose, okay, I want to become an artisan. You can only have one artisan, like Flo was saying, for each character. So what that ends up doing is, like Flo said, have multiple characters and get, you know, essentially multiple characters with different artisans so that you can kind of feed off each other. But at the same time, you're still going to be using that server-wide production points. So it does, it, it still limits you. It still limits you. But to go through the entire crafting system, I just kind of want to touch on this because I, I personally did a video on my YouTube, uh, I'll post a link to that too, of how to actually get Artisan. But essentially, once you hit 500, there's going to be a prompt to, yes, I want to become Artisan. It's then going to put you through a, essentially a trial of crafting old gear, crafting new gear, crafting, you know, 
refining ores, refining metals, or, you know, basically you have to craft a bunch of stuff to, in order to actually become that artisan. So, kind of moving on into the blood honed gear that he was talking about. The one major thing about this crafting patch is that they are putting major emphasis on critting. Like, basically crit, proccing, essentially, a, a higher tier or a more, uh, you make more of something. For those who don't remember what exactly that is, it's like, you know, like when you make scrolls and, you know, you make two, and then, you know, you get lucky, you're like, oh man, I made six, like, you know, like when you make potions and stuff. For me, like, that, that gives me that excitement, because... I used to make draughts all the time, you know those big fat heels. Like I, those are the heels that save me in those dungeon runs. Like I, I had, I have those all the time. So now instead, you can when you're making a piece of gear, which I'll show here, you pretty much can. Let's say like I'll, I have like the, this is the scythe here. Okay, this is the um, the reaper scythe. If I get if I get that crit proc, I'll be able to make the masterwork equivalent of that weapon. Mm. So. That you can do that for armor too, and you'll be able to do that for any sort of future gear for the most part. So it's like you save like for one, you're gonna have to spend these production points for to get these materials in the first place. But yeah, all like that emphasis on critting, the emphasis on getting that lucky proc, pretty much saves you so much resources, and as a result, it saves you those production points. So they cool. do they do have the. Uh, the cash shop equivalent. That's what of that. I was gonna say. I was yeah, gonna say. Yeah. So if you're not the type that doesn't like playing off of the like riding the tides and getting lucky, you know they do have the cash shop equivalent. It does. How much does it raise your percentage by? Like fifteen percent. Fifteen. Yeah. So it's not like mind blowing, but yeah. like it definitely you'll definitely see a difference when you're making like when you're playing those big production crafts. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Evie's yeah. running around. Uh, but that's one thing that I think a lot of people are kind of like, eh, about, is with that artisan additive that was added to the cash shop. I mean, essentially with that, it's a little, little pay to win, but once again, you can pretty much buy, I bought mine off the auction house, actually. You know, people who did buy EMP or will buy, uh, I don't, I, I forget what the Terra EU currency is. But I used that to actually craft, and I proc this flawless blood hone scythe. I then easily master worked it with two scrolls, plus nined it, super easy again, and then sold that thing for like twenty thousand gold. So, on on the patch hit, if you want to go, and also one one thing, guys, is that this has to be you have to be an artisan in weaponsmithing to even try crafting these. So you have to make that choice. Hey, I want to be an, an artisan weapon master, essentially, before anything else is going to really go on. So that's kind of a, a money-making method just for anyone who are, is looking for weaponsmithing. Because yeah. weaponsmithing doesn't offer a ton. It doesn't offer a ton other than preparing for next patch whenever the weapon crafting oils are actually used to craft PvP Knife Forge. Yeah. Do you happen to have any, any other just kind of tales of crafting or anything like that? I did I did sell like around like four masterwork weapons to be honest. Did you? <laughs> yeah, wow. I got pretty lucky for the most part. Um uh, I don't know No. I'm just good. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but uh for the most part, um I don't know exactly how EU is gonna handle it, but on NA we actually got um a free character slot. Like, mm -hmm. they gave us all a free character slot. I'm hoping EU does the same thing. They had, they raised the amount of character slots to 12. 12. 12, right. So you can make um, four additional characters. What it is is that when you go on the character select screen, it's going to be, like, page one, and you flip it, and then they just it, it'll just show you. Oh, like, really? Yeah, it shows you the second set. Huh. Okay. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't really checked yet. So... Before we move on about crafting, though, we didn't talk about etching. So, etching, guys, is the new profession that was added into, basically, into Terra. And it's a lot like enchanting in World of Warcraft, or, well, hell, enchanting. I, I don't know what other professions in other games would be. So, what it does is it crafts these temporary scrolls, which are going to be boosting several important stats, essentially. On gloves, 
you can get power, you can get crit rate, you can get healing increase. All of those things are very important. You can also have those that same kind. Weapons and, and gloves share the same kind of of enchant basically. Of the patterns, yeah. And yeah. then uh, armor and boots share the same pattern as well. But they're mm -hmm. separate ones. Like you have to make one specifically for boots. You have to make one specifically for chest, for weapon, and for glove. But they do share the same stats. So you can have two of the same stats. Mm -hmm. For example, on my weapon right here, if you inspect me, I have the pump two. That's five power for three days. Um, as, as we were previously mentioning in terms of the crit proc, if you were to craft with those procs, it gives you um, when you're making these patterns. Like when you when you make the pattern, you have you know it gives you um, three power for three days or uh, a a thousand five hundred HP for three days. You get those procs. You will get um, you can get crafting mats, which mm -hmm. which create the advanced scrolls. And those advanced scrolls, if you proc them, then you get the permanent version of that yeah. scroll, which means you don't have to worry about replacing it every few days, and it offers more stats. So if I were to crit proc that scroll I just have on my weapon right there, then I would have had 7 power permanently, no matter what. Yeah. So that, this is something to keep in mind as um, basically it really gives that big upscale for damage. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, I'm kind of a little sad that the system isn't at the moment, which we, it's because it's kind of like a, a it's mandatory a requirement. Thing. Yeah, for one, it's like a money sink, and for two, it's a requirement for PvP right now because... That's what we're bringing in, our gear and such. So, mm -hmm. But at the same time, it does bring a new depth to crafting and such. Like yeah. that gives you those really nice perks. Now when I get crit by Lancers, it's not 9k, it's 12k. <laughs> so it's like... I, I think um, one, thing, one thing about it, though, is that it's not fulfilled yet. You know what I mean? Because this pat or th these crafting changes essentially are intended for next patch to fully develop them do you know do you know what i mean since right now you can craft weapon oils you can't craft the gear with weapon oils but you can craft them so it's not fulfilled yet and one thing one result of that is that the only way to get certain materials is by essentially getting lucky from the 357 because they introduced like a new chest drop much like the zenith chest um which drops crafting materials yeah and i know i mean i've done i've done a couple of the the etchings you know to see if i can get a permanent one mm -hmm. uh, much like you and i paid for one attempt one attempt i paid around 10k gold you know, or like seven, eight k. Yeah, it cost me like around like four k gold for like my first attempt. Um, for the most part, you can get these boxes through doing the new dungeons, mm -hmm. uh, channel work, shattered fleet, Kessel's gorge, um, wonder home. Those are like the main ones that you can get it out of. Uh, you can also get it in PvP as well. Uh, the daily CS box, the daily Kuma box. You can, and I believe the daily Freywind. Possibly. I believe you can you can get the you will get a chance when you like um, when you open up a sea chest for example it gives you the key and when you pick one of the four options you can get a crafting mat yeah so it's like um, but keep in mind those are the basic crafting mats they're not even like the full crafting one that you're going to that that is required and what this means is like uh, let's see. Such as this purified hearts here on my screen. I'm not sure what what you mastered in, but the purified hearts here. You see, it takes three contaminated hearts tears to craft one purified. Yeah. Also, you um, get as <laughs> as as mentioned, um, you also get four boxes through doing Nexus. So every time you do yeah. Nexus, you'll get four boxes. Nexus gives a lot. Nexus yeah, that's like the, the most best, profitable actually. one. But so it takes three of these contaminated hearts here, which you could get an array. Like you're not just gonna if you're a weaponsmith, you're not just gonna get these hearts here is what you need. You're gonna get the armor smithing ones, you're gonna get the etching ones, you're gonna get all of those. So right now these crafting materials are pretty expensive and the thing is, you guys, y'all can't really prepare for this. Y'all just have to be ready to put your time in and, and Work the only it, way you, know you can I mean? really prepare, as I was saying, uh, in, in the other podcast, is to have a lot of money mm -hmm. and to uh, gather up idyllic leaves. That's the only thing you can get right now because by the next patch, um, they just um, they just pretty much they just add like the whole new. They have a no, whole new drop table and all the gathering nodes. All the dungeons have different boxes, mm -hmm. so 
that's the, really the only thing you can do is just have money and just collecting as many idyllic leaves as possible. <laughs> yeah. And Gravehide, by the way. Gravehide is going to be good for uh, leveling up your armor smithing. Yeah. So just Gravehide, idyllic leaves, and money. <laughs> good yeah. luck. You know? Have some runes as well. You know, don't be tossing away the sicker runes. If you are looking, if you have to level a profession from 1 to 500, you're going to need some of those. You're going to need sicker runes. You're going to need error runes. So I don't believe toss they removed the, uh, the crafting quest too. Like, there's no yeah, crafting quest. There's no quest. crafting quest. You have so to do it have from to scratch. Do it. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do it, if you're going to prep right now, you need to get, get your shit to 410. Like, it doesn't really take that much work. They give you, like, the easy mode system on the quest board. Just go in there. Just follow along. 250 gold will get you to 410. Otherwise, you're going to be paying... Thousands of gold. Yeah. Or, five to and, 10, and, and you won't get everything done. Because, by the way, when you're leveling your crafting, you're going to fucking use our production points. So, it's just... Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, hey, I'm going to have to limit my down um, those points that I could have been using to level up past what I really yeah. wanted to really get, try to get into the new content um, as we did not mention you get 5 points per 5 minutes which means you will get 1440 points per day mm-hmm. It'll they'll provide you the points whether you're online or offline the only way you can um, restore them not have to deal with these points is a 4k cap you can't go past the 4k cap but if you are using the points and you don't want to wait, you there is um there is an NPC that they add in Velika. Uh, he roams around the um the two NP uh the two general stores around the Velik Steps port. It's kind of like um you know those um handlers that you that you find in um you know the quest in uh, Crescentia with the guy with the bag. He's got like the backpack and he's walking around and you escort him from uh, Lumber Town to Crescentia. The peddler? Like he's yeah, the peddler. Peddler. yeah, the peddler. Yeah, the peddler. Yeah, he's a peddler. Uh, he sells you this pot, which um, it sells for around 5k gold, and uh, you can just buy it off of there, 5k gold, excluding tax, and um, you can give yourself 1,000 points. So just if you have, like, say, 3,200 points, don't use it, because those extra points are going to go into the garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, the other way that they have it is there is, um, you can get these pots off of Cash Shop, I believe. Yeah. Is it like loot boxes? Yeah. You have a chance of getting, you have, it's a guarantee of one to two. And you have a chance of getting like four, so it's like uh, there is that option to yeah. play the market for those people that don't want to wait. So, and I know a lot of people did <laughs> pretty much did go about spending a lot of money to get their crafting profession yeah. out there as quick as possible. Because I know for etching, for example, the first people to craft those you know permanent scrolls. We're selling them at around seventy five thousand gold, you know, and on the on U.S. servers, that's a a lot. I know, I know, EU's a little bit inflated though. So I know we've kind of we pretty much beat crafting and reapers into the ground, and there's only a couple other minor things that that I wanted to touch up on uh, after that point. One one small, very convenient life change essentially that came into that came to Terra with this patch as well was the rehaul of the glyph system or not rehaul but basically the UI update of the glyph system and so what they did now if, if everyone goes to that you're going to see that they, they have a nice layout overall and the main thing that they did was all white glyphs so all non-advanced glyphs you get as you level you don't have to worry about going to your glyph, you know, your glyph guy, the glyph trainer, buying new ones every single time. You're automatically going to get those. I think that this is a really cool feature for people who are starting getting into the game, as well as, you know, people, veterans even, who j- just want to, like, power level through something and they don't want to go back to get that glyph. You know? they, uh, they also remove toggles. So what this means is that you can pretty much... You don't, like, let's say right here, like, I'll just switch my profile to page two. No problem. Like, easy peasy. Um, it lets you switch your glyphs on the fly. You know, like, I have PvP and PvE pages, so I have to switch to my PvE page. Bam. Like, pretty much easy. Get out of combat. Boom. Switch my page. Get back into it. Oh, I want to switch a glyph? Here, let me click this button here. I'll press another one. Move my character. Check back the page. It's already in. It's simple as that. They make yeah. this this stuff really easy uh if you have glyph toggles now you can npc them 
they're not worth anything. <laughs> they're worth the the, the price that you Glyph paid for. Have... So they call it useless glyph toggles. So they're pretty much um, discarded for the most part. What are you trading? Oh, this is right there—the useless <laughs> glyph toggle. I, yeah, I forgot that I had some. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and it, it's really cool the fact that you don't have to save the profile again too. Like it was always so annoying whenever it's like you're trying to change that one glyph and then you forget to hit save on it. So this just makes that a lot easier. So I think that that's going to be a cool feature and a, a very user friendly feature for all the people who are going to start getting into Terra and start playing. You know. So that they're not going to be worrying about, oh, glyphs. Hell, half the time when, when you talk to a new player, they don't even know what glyphs are. So if they're hitting their skills, they're going to show, it'll show glyphs now. So a lot more people will be getting that while they're leveling. Uh, the only other thing, really, has been this the combo attack change as well. We talked about this on a previous podcast. And what this does is for every single class, there is an individual, there's actually a buff that you're going to be getting whenever you auto attack a mob or character. As you can see in the top right here, it's going to be a stacking buff right here, one, two, three, four. For a berserker, when you get four hits, so four combo attacks into a player, it actually gives you 25% charging speed uh, on your next attack for four, um, for 10 seconds. So you have 10 seconds to use this. That's a, a very quick charge. And it's optimally used, in my opinion, on Cyclone. Or if you are in the process, if you're able to weave auto attacks and um, through like a KD chain in PvP, you're going to be able to get more charge out of it. What is your basically opinion? basically what it is is that when you get okay when you get your first auto attack, you'll have ten seconds to get the next stat, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't it, you don't have to do it in a row. It's just a matter of just throwing in the auto attack before the time ends. Mm -hmm. By the time you get the the maximum stacks for your specific class, you cannot combo attack to reset it to try to keep the duration going up. You're gonna have to use that proc in those ten seconds, or you lose it and you're gonna have to rebuild it. Uh, for the most part, for Slayers, when you build up for the four stacks, you will get uh, a bonus speed of 20% Whirlwind. And so, uh, like, you know, at first that doesn't really sound like much, but just imagine getting a uh, Fury Strike on a Whirlwind 25%, Headlong Rush 50%, Glyph of Swift procs. So you can really see a Whirlwind that's pretty much like an instantaneous Typhoon, like, <laughs> for the most yeah. part. So, um,. It really it gives a, a lot of creative thought to it. Um, for the most part, in PvP, it is kind of a little niche to really pull it off. For PvE, it's a lot easier to pull mm -hmm. off, for sure, both for um, Berserkers and Slayers. There are other classes that do get this buff. We're just kind of showing off our mains right now, since yeah. uh, you know, we both play these classes. But Essentially you'll be able to see it for the patch notes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Essentially, they emphasize being actually gaining something more other than just mana. For auto attacking you know a lot of times in raids you don't have to you don't have to auto attack because you have infused charms and healers giving you constant mana but so with the with this introduction it gives you a little bit more benefit out of auto attacking it's not going to be something that you're going to be weaving to increase dps or anything like that it's just a nice little perk to it and like flow said you can go to the patch notes and it will tell you all the benefits of each individual class. So that's just kind of one thing to keep in mind. And really, there was only one more small thing that I wanted to talk about. And that was the introduction of innerwear here recently. What What is your opinion on, on this new gear slot? Uh, it's just, uh, it just gives you enough HP. Like once, uh, There's three tiers of innerwear. There's the, the white, the green, and the blue. And for the most part, uh, it... The blue one pretty much gives you a free Relentless Crux. So that's around like 3k HP. And then there's like different stats. It's just kind of an add-on on top of the etchin patterns. So the etchin patterns are going to give you like, you know, the 6 power on your weapon, the 6 power on your gloves. And then for the etching, and then you get the inner wear and you're going to have the 6 power as well. So um, it's just an, an extra stat. It gives you, there's a few um, things you want to change. It's kind of like um, a utility thing for the I most. I mean, but that extra stat, you can't under under talk that. 
Yeah. On a Berserker, like, I'm, right now, the blue innerware, which is the best one that you can get, cost me 65,000 gold to get this thing, but I did get it. It gives me 12 crit rate. 12. That's only two less than an entire weapon roll. That's more than a crit roll is going to be on your gloves. That's a lot of crit rate for just a, a new added item. You know, and, and that's not even talking about the etching patterns that are introduced here. This really, in my opinion, this really does add a lot, like a lot more power, a lot more crit rate into the game. So it's, it's one thing that you definitely want to be on the lookout for. How can we go about getting these, though? Uh, they are, uh, for one, um, if you do your vaults, and you do your um, BT solo, uh, Baldur's Temple solo, you will get these, uh, these things called Goldfinger tokens. And Goldfinger tokens, uh, basically, you can you get like around 80, and once you get 80, you go right-click the item, and you'll be able to uh, uh, open the box. The box is a chance of having the three colors, mm -hmm. white, green, or blue, so you kind of have to get lucky. Um, yeah. At the moment, the tokens are character base which means you can't bank them but i do believe na is planning to change that and i'm hoping he sure. does the same um just for the most part it's just kind of like a way you can get it for the free-to-play way you can get it through the cash shop as well i believe there are loot boxes for that it's rng um same shit you can get white green or blue when you buy it through the cash shop yeah it's nicer underwear too it's got a different look to it i got mine <laughs> i showed it off on my on my recording <laughs> <laughs> but uh, pretty much um, it kind of trolls you a little bit because it, yeah. it alerts you when you get a green like, yeah, locally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it has that green announcement and you're just like... Uh -huh. Well, it's a nice stat and uh, it really helps you, you know, really min-max your character. So do definitely... It is an extra piece of gear that you're going to have to get, so... More than likely, for all the people who are looking to min-max, you're going to buy this with gold. You're yeah. not gonna, just just to be. I'll tell you right now. You. I I got like four white ones. Each white one I got, I muted on Teamspeak. I didn't speak. I just started throwing them on the floor. Like each one, I'm just like, it's just like uh, I was in my guildie, and he's like, "Hey, did you get? What'd you get?" And I'm just like, I didn't get anything, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just yeah. um. Just uh, if you once you get one, it'll just give give you some nice stats. One thing, one thing that Flo um, you, you pretty much forgot to mention is the four different kinds that are going to be available. So one of them is a, like he was saying, get it's all of these are going to have that flat HP increase, which is about that crux. You're going to have one that's going to give you five with the blue. I'm going to talk only about the blue one because that's going to be the highest end one. The blue one. For the pure HP, gives 5.4% maximum health. That's a lot. <laughs> like, that, that's a Xenothearing right there. Like yeah. a Xenothearing roll right there. That's huge. That's a, more, actually. 5.4 is going to be higher. That's that's around like 4 to 6k health, 6, I believe. 6,000 health, pretty much. I mean, on yeah. healers, especially. Yeah, there's every from what I've seen, like you pretty much um, the innerware also increases your eye level. And you'll see multiple people hit 100k plus on their HP, so it's just like, oh. it's pretty insane for the most part. I just noticed <laughs> I'm item level 172. I'm a baller. <laughs> yeah, and increases your eye level as well. But yeah, so so one of them increases just your straight health. The, net, the other one is going to be mana per 5. So it's I think it's 110 mana per 5. This is, I don't really think that that's a super useful stat, in my opinion. Just healers, super situationally, might want to use that if you're, like, super all PvE, that's all that you do. Um, especially with the next, the next patch, I, healer, I hear it's going to be healer intensive. And then the main ones that everyone is looking at is the power, the power ones and the crit ones. Once again, the crit one gives you 12, and the power one gives you... Seven? Six. 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 Six additional power. So, and, and and just to kind of put those in there into perspective once again, a Berserker comes with a base power of 75. So you're looking at not, not a 10% increase, but like an 8% increase in overall power. I only have plus 14 power from gear. And then the attack speed... 
or sorry, the crit rate one. I have 58 base. An additional 12 on that, that's almost a, you know, 25% in, almost a 25% increase. For, for range space. DPS and Berserkers 20%. out there, so just imagine getting the etching pattern. 12 on your weapon, 12 on your gloves, 14 on. 12 inner wear. Yeah. So it's pretty overkill for the most part. You're almost giving yourself double crit rate glyph. Which uh, <laughs> Zerkas, you have a percentage crit double. You don't have a crit rate double, you have a percentage double. So if we stack crit rate on crit rate on crit rate, you're going to crit almost every single time. So yeah. uh, in my opinion, just, just kind of a brief overview of, of the inner wear, what you want to get class to class. Healers, get the health one. I, In my opinion, you don't need the mana one. Berserkers, archers, all your damage comes from crits. All of it. You're not a fast attacking class, you're a charge up class. Get the crit rate one. What about... what? Classes you think you need the power one? Uh, Slayers for one because we have triple crit rate. We're pretty much hitting the diminishing return. Um, Lancers are going to be um, very. It really depends on Lancer because there's times where power is just amazing, but if you don't, like, you know, some people, it's going to be like a little bit niche. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Reaper is also going to be depending, but I'm really leaning towards the crit rate on Reaper simply really? because they just have only one double crit glyph and most of their damage is off of these tiny numbers so either the tiny numbers all crit or the tiny numbers all plus uh like get have like additional power so i think power is better this, yeah. that's gonna be a theory crafting yeah, disagreement yeah it's gonna there. be well that's a, that's another <laughs> argument so but it's yeah. definitely there so so for dps honestly the inner wear is more of a dps thing healers that hp increase great Priests are going to be even harder to kill. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. But yeah, overall, guys, I hope we touched up on what this patch is going to be doing, and it's it's a little bit more hands on in comparison to our previous ones, which have all all been okay. This is what we think it's going to be like. Now we got hands on for it. We're giving pretty much all the information that we can to make sure that you are prepared and understand how this patch works. So just kind of a, a quick quickie overview. Run Baldur's Temple solo. You're going to be getting Oculus gear on your Reaper, which is insanely good. It's equal to plus nine said fast. And you're going to be getting the Goldfinger tokens. So you should be doing it on both your main character and your Reaper and what and alt. The Goldfinger token to have a chance at getting the new good in, or new inner wear. Do you want to talk about the crafting? Uh, for the most part with the crafting, um, really touch up on some research prior. Like You're going to want to know what you want to be going for. Try to have a, a little bit of a plan beforehand. After all, you <laughs> only can have one artisan per character on your main account. Um, I recommend making multiple accounts mm -hmm. and have maybe accounts that gather. Mm -hmm. I, do not, I don't recommend botting, but you know, just Mother go gather, fucker. man. Like, I, I, recommend, I also recommend... Um, the, the, the things that you do now, you'll be rewarded a lot more. So if you're used to doing PvE on a daily basis, 357, 357 on lots of characters, you will be rewarded greatly for that. So make, make sure to do that on a daily basis. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, like for the most part. <laughs> I think that's everything, right? Or did we miss something? Yeah, that's pretty much going to be everything. Other than that, the test out the attack speed chain or the auto attack change for your individual class if you're leveling uh make sure you use this new cool glyph system and whatnot if you're an advanced player be happy we don't got to pay for glyph toggles anymore those things got damn expensive and yeah overall um one more one more quick thing about the crafting remember each different crafting uses another crafting's material to be uh, or basically in their crafting so if you imagine etching at the top here etching is used in alchemy alchemy uh or alchemy makes stuff for weapon smithing weapon smithing makes stuff for armor smithing armor smithing makes stuff for etching so if you want to specialize in a certain category be sure to know about the, the category beforehand uh, yosha does have a full-on crafting guide on this on the Terra Today forums, if you're looking for more information on that, for the most part, it's pretty much kind of like a like a cycle: weapon, yeah. armor, armor, etching, etching, alchemy, alchemy, weapon. So yeah, 
Pretty, pretty simple for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so pretty much, guys. Hopefully, you all found this informational. And if you did like this video, make sure to obviously like down like down there. If you happen to have any questions related to this patch, one, go to the Terra Today forums. We're all on there. I have a Berserker AMA. He has a, a Slayer AMA. We answer those actively. There's a lot a, of very experienced players as well as a, a pretty good pool of newer players on the forums. So I want everyone who's watching the stream now to go to terratoday.com, go to the forums and make an account. At least make an introduction post. Come on. And then if you're watching on my YouTube, I'll make sure to post a link also down below to make sure you actually do set up an account because they are our sponsors, which means Flo's actually going to give something out at, at the end of this stream. Free EMP for the for the Free NA stuff! People. Yeah. yeah. NA people. All right, guys. Uh, just the plug life section, as always. Uh, make sure to go to YouTube.com slash Killrian. That's my main thing. I make a lot of terror related content on there i know most of you are probably followed already because you all are my loyal fans and uh make sure to follow me on twitter at kellyan because that's going to automatically update anytime i start streaming or upload a youtube video and yeah and if you want to check out anything about me uh you can see me at my stream at twitch.tv slash floral um i also uh do youtube content just like kirian <laughs> so i do um i've recently actually uploaded a slayer guide like a kind of like a brief overview of what the slayer is at youtube.com slash floral you can also see like any sort of my own shenanigans highlights etc um if you want to see what i'm up to and uh how, like how much i love to talk about Terra, i do do a lot of twi uh, tweets at, at twitter at floral and if you want to know about me, I also have my own Facebook page at Floro as well. So that's pretty much it for me for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for watching, guys. And once again, thank you for the patience in getting this 15th Everything Terra podcast out. We do definitely want to do this weekly. Uh, it's just a matter of making sure the schedules work. Thank you all for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Peace out. And stay in for the giveaway. Whee! If you're in whatever. Yeah. Adios, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>